You want so badly to get better as a trader, but you're just not sure how to do so. Well, in this video, we show you how one trader nicknamed Legend, due to his unbelievable trading prowess, did just that, and exactly how. Hi, I'm Mike Bellafieri, co-founder of SME Capital, a proprietary trading firm located in New York City, and the author of the trading classic One Good Trade and the playbook. Founded in 2005, SME Capital trades stocks and options and futures and crypto, both as discretionary and automated traders. Lance Breitstein, the number one trader at a tier one prop firm in back-to-back -back years, teaches you how he went from top 10 at his trading firm to number one. Hi everyone, I'm Lance Breitstein and I'm here with SMB to present to you my daily report card template. So, from the old story Alice in Wonderland, one day Alice came to a fork in the road and saw a Cheshire cat in a tree. Which road do I take, she asked. Where do you want to go, was his response. I don't know, Alice answered. Then said the cat, it doesn't matter. And what I find so often with many struggling traders is that they're frustrated because they really don't have any direction. They don't know what their main thing to work on is, and they don't know where the best value of their time is, and they haven't taken the time to reflect on the most efficient path to end up where they want to go. I focus so much of my time on meta-learning, which is the whole process of how to get good at something and develop a skill set, or how to learn something most effectively. And so one of the key essential parts of this is you need to really have direction and aim in your pursuit. And so what I'm going to show you is the best practice that helped take me from being a top 10 trader and catapulted me to number one at a tier one prop firm. And this is the first practice I implement when helping a team of traders become great. And with this, consistency is everything. So much is building your identity. I don't skip the daily report card and doing this every single day. So without further ado, the daily report card is a daily review process done with the goal of efficiently improving one's trading. It pushes the trader to identify the most important aspect of their trading, and it forces them to work consciously and reflect on their progress towards that goal each day. And so here's why it works. As part of meta-learning, deliberate practice is just so, so important. And what that is, is like I said, having an intention and a purpose to every single session. Tiger Woods famously is known for never ever swinging that club without reflecting on that shot taken. He was never just mindlessly hitting balls at the range. And so like that, each trading session needs purpose and direction. And journaling increases mindfulness and awareness, which has been discussed many times by Dr. Steenbarger. And this process also helps you spot negative habits and adapt faster. A lot of traders this year have struggled to adapting to the new market regime. The breakouts and the momentum plays to the long side that were so effective in past years were no longer working. And those that were following this process daily were so much quicker to adapt and change their trading to, uh, to much success. And most importantly too, the daily report card helps you track your accomplishments and feel the progress you're making. So here's the template that I used for many, many years, and I'm gonna walk you through all the logic behind it. So first of all, I would start with the date and a grade. Just A through F works fine, but you can also do plus or minus or whatever system makes sense to you. And then as mentioned, it's so important to identify one goal and so many people ask like, oh, can I do multiple ones? But I strongly urge from my own experience and many of the people I've trained with just to do one. And so these goals shouldn't be P&L focused or anything like that. It should be what are you trying to improve in your trading process? So that could be like something, something like I want to work on over trading. I want to be more deliberate with my sizing. I want to identify three important things on the box, and then you want to break that down with solutions. So for example, if overtrading is your issue, you can then say, I want to do only uh, five trades today. And the way I'm going to do that is consciously checking in every hour or something like that. And so now when you grade your daily report card, that grade you're giving is solely based on, did you accomplish that one select goal for the day? And that's so important because it moves the focus away from P&L. You're not grading your day based on whether you were green, red, made a lot or a little. It's solely, solely, solely based on did you make progress in that process goal that you chose for that day. So that's the goal aspect of it. Then below there, you do the uh, reminders or any aphorisms to yourself. So these were things that I just felt were always good to just read over pre-market and refresh my mind on. 
Uh, but of course, you know, it can be whatever is most applicable to you. And so this might be listening to the intraday chart in the box, game planning, various situations, um, being careful about uh, fading stuff uh, that's above VWAP, whatever works for you. Now this next section was also crucially important. So this was essentially a whole breakdown of the day. And I would grade myself on each little chunk in these segments from pre-market, 9.30 to 11 a.m., 11 to 12, 12 to 2, and 2 to 4. And so the beauty of this is you can catch snowballing bad habits before they uh, kind of just spiral of worse. And the other thing too is you can fail in one segment but still win the day and by, by doing much better on the following ones. So that first thing where it says temp, that was just my morning temperature. And I don't mean that in the literal sense in this COVID world, but more so how am I feeling? Am I focused? Uh, am I feeling good? Am I ready to attack the day? Did I sleep well? And so even with sleep, I was tracking uh, my sleep using the aura ring, which would give me a grade. And so between all these factors, I would grade myself and know how much I want to risk each day based on that. So if I was tired, sick, stressed, or hungover, in no way would I want to risk the same amount as if I was very well rested, feeling great, and on a very positive streak. So 9.30 to 11 a.m., at 11 a.m. I would reflect on that segment. Again, this is to catch anything snowballing. Uh, what is my grade? Was I sticking to the play of the day? Uh, was I sizing properly? Was I working on things that were only in my favor? And then any additional comments or notes I might have. And I did the same for the rest of those segments. Then upon the end of the day, I would take the time to reflect what I improved upon or learned. And the beauty of this in there is that this made sure that every single day I was at least learning something. It didn't matter how frustrated I, I was, how slow the day might have been, and even if there were zero opportunities, I would make sure to fill out this section because there's always something to learn if you take the time to do it. Then in the next section, changes I need to make from today. So this is where I would help uh, kind of solve any problems I might have been doing. Okay, look, I've started to, um, I've started to overtrade or maybe uh, I'm being too aggressive because I'm on a hot streak. And so this is where I would write down the changes I would want to correct for the next trading day, as well as some solutions, and then overview. This was kind of my just miscellaneous anything goes section. What could I have done better on the day? Like what did I think? What, what kind of got me uh, focused or not focused? Uh, what have been some of the market trends I'm seeing? Really this section was the catch-all for, for my reflection of the day. Then the easiest 50K. So 50K might not be the right number for you, but for me I really wanted to identify what was that one trade that day that I could have really made, made a, uh, a nice mark on? And most importantly, I'm not saying the biggest trade either. Sometimes there might be some huge opportunities, but, was so, but, but what was so cool about this is I really wanted to focus on the easiest for me and my playbook. So often people get seduced by kind of like the really big chops or where maybe the biggest money was, but that's kind of often mis mistaken because uh, you know, the ROI is, is much more favorable sometimes on the really, really easy stuff and the layups for you. Then the last section would be uh, my tickers. And this is where any important trade of the day I would write up. Uh, the level of detail would de be determined by how important the play was. Um, if it was a pretty slow day, of course, I would just exclude this section overall to save time. And so this was the summary of the template I followed for many, many, many years. Another way to do this, or also think about this, is the 3 2, one method. And this is a tool used by elite athletes immediately post-competition. Not to be confused with the 3 2, one method for smoking ribs, which is equally powerful as it is delicious, but so what it is with this method is it's asked of athletes that at the end of their competition, they re look back and reflect on three highlights that they're proud of. Maybe they improved on a play, maybe they kept uh, their mental game together when, when they were down in the game, uh, anything that you can think of, and that also applies to our trading. For example, maybe you stayed focused, maybe after a bad trade you didn't let yourself get on tilt. So it's so important to celebrate your wins. Um, two lowlights, and most importantly, how can you address them? So any single day, you need to critically reflect and be objective on what you could have done better. And just developing this mindset is so important as a developing trader because you need to be honest and objective and find those little improvements. And then the one top lesson to take forward with you. 
based on that whole trading day, what is the most important thing for you to carry forward? Is there some critical lesson you learned? Is there some critical lesson you need to avoid? Whatever it might be, what is the number one thing that you can learn from that day and carry forward? So now advanced tactics. I cannot recommend enough that you find a team to share your DRC with each day and vice versa. This multiplies the learning for all. So I really think one of the biggest things that helped me get to the top is using this practice. I was also sharing it with two other top traders. And so every single day for years, not only would I send them my DRC, but then I'd be able to read theirs. And what this does is it just multiplies your learning in the sense that I was able to learn from three top guys. What were their best trades? What are they learning? What are they improving on? Uh, what, what habits did they spot? What solutions are they coming up with that I can apply to my trading? So it's almost like just for the same amount of effort when you work on a team, you're getting 3x the benefit and learning three times as fast. So then always include solution-based reflections. If you come to the, to the conclusion that you're over trading, and you simply identify it but don't propose any solutions, you've done an important step, but it's only half the battle. The more important step is actually figuring out what you're going to do to fix that in the next trading days. And as silly as it sounds, I highly recommend using your daily report card to celebrate your wins. I believe it's BJ Fogg of Stanford who says regarding habits, the most important thing to cement them is to celebrate them. Whether it's a dumb little hurrah or whether it's a pat on your back or a nice little clapping to yourself, uh, schedule it into your routine and make it a win. And then, as Jerry Seinfeld would say in his writing days, don't break the chain. Consistency is everything with this practice. So many traders find success when doing this, but then once they find success, they stop doing the things that brought them there. And for this practice, it only works if you're consistent. So don't break that chain and do it day after day after day. Finally, make it your own. This is what worked for me, that's not what's gonna work for everyone or necessarily anyone. So find out what little tweaks you can make, share it with FinTwits, share it with your trading community, and let's all help each other get better. And so here are some frequently asked questions I tend to get. When do you change DRC goals? Or the common question alongside that is, do you only move on once you've mastered that goal? And this is a really great question because it's, it's, it's quite valid. And I would say I change DRC goals when it's no longer the highest ROI goal. For example, if I want to say my issue is over trading and that's what I want to work on, that doesn't mean if I ever have an extra trade or I ever lose willpower or if I ever you know, have a dumb trade or slip, it means I shouldn't move on. Right? If I've even reduced it to amount where it's no longer the most beneficial thing, and maybe now I need to work on sizing, I need to make that decision and make that call and recognize that perfection's the enemy of a lot of progress. And I've gone far enough where it's not worth it anymore. On to the next one. Is it okay to have multiple goals at once? Again, so many people try this. I can't explain psychologically why. It's way beyond uh, my intelligence, but the research backs up everything I've seen. People do better with one goal at once. And what I find is if you do one goal at once, maybe each goal takes you three weeks, maybe a month. If you were to try to do all three goals at once, four or five months later, you've done none of them to the point that you would have otherwise. How long does someone frequently spend on each set goal? Really varies. Um, some of these goals are really, really, really difficult to reprogram especially under the pressures of real-time trading, which can be very fast-paced, some of these goals need to really take time and a lot of reps. So I would say anywhere from probably two weeks to many months. Uh, there's, there's been some goals I've had for three, four months at a time, and uh, it's, it's just what it is. So what if it's slow or if you barely traded? Do you still fill out a DRC? Big emphatic yes. I would actually say these are the most important days because these are the days that most people slip by and don't make any progress. And these are still the days where you can put in the effort to find something new to improve upon or do other productive work. So every single day, do not break the chain. So here's my challenge to you all. Can you all spend for the month of July and do a DRC every single trading day? If you can, share it with your community, share it on Twitter, tag me in it, do a hashtag uh, DRC Summer Challenge and let's see what you all can come up with. Any questions, reach out to me on Twitter at the one Lance B. And as I always say, then let's get theft to work.
Hey, go ahead and click our subscribe button so you don't miss any of the videos they're producing for you in the trading community. And please take the time to add your feedback in the comments section for what videos you'd like for us to produce next and what you found helpful from this video from all of us at SMB. Train and trade well.